Welcome back to lesson five of opportunities. We're discussing and praying about all of the opportunities God gives to us and through us. Sometimes those opportunities are not immediately obvious. For example, when the garbage is full, we don't always see that as an opportunity, but it's an opportunity to move the garbage out of the building and make room for other people's trash. In other words, serving is an opportunity. I know it's a hard sell, but being a Christian is a hard sell to the carnal flesh. Jesus, with all of his power and charisma, was unable to get most of his crowds to follow him into true faith. He said few would walk the path, but the path of service is actually very purposeful and fulfilling. We may miss many opportunities because they're hiding Before looking at how this concept played out in the Bible or how it's played out in your lives, allow me to share how it's played out in my experience. My life has been blessed. At times I've found myself leading conferences, overseeing projects, speaking to audiences, writing books, or making video projects like this one. I felt unworthy and surprised at my good fortune. Because my work has often been in front of others, some have asked me how I got where I am. I often detect some are in search of a formula or shortcut to success, but others are trying to just figure out how to let God maximize their potential. They often imagine that my journey was full of big breaks or divine moments. While I can look back on key moments or divine appointments, I can honestly say that most of my opportunities came as ordinary invitations to serve. The roles and jobs I've filled seem to all present themselves as needs. The need for a primary teacher, the need for a bus captain, the need for someone to scrape and paint the church. It was as I did my best to meet a need that people began to trust me with responsibilities and positions. My willingness to do unattractive tasks created some of my greatest opportunities. So people are surprised when I tell them that the path to God's best life is marked by many positive responses to opportunities to serve. This is counterintuitive, but it tracks with Jesus' advice to his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verses 42 through 44. This is from the New Living Translation. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those that are under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. Could it be that some of your greatest breaks or most meaningful roles are waiting for you in the form of service to others? If our goal is to serve others, we'll never lack for things to do. If we serve as Jesus did, expecting nothing in return, we can experience the kind of ministry he experienced. Jesus went about doing good no matter how bad the world around him seemed to be. Jesus demonstrated that it's possible to draw our strength from God and take every opportunity to give it to others and to live in joy no matter how people respond or what positions people are willing to bestow. bestow. Jesus was working at a kingdom level, and he didn't keep score as to how he benefited, and he invites us to do the same. Let's talk and pray about this for a few minutes. The sixth and seventh 
chapters of Acts tell a story that reveals how misdirected the religious people of that day were. It also reveals just how heroic and brave a spirit-filled believer can be. It's the story of Stephen's martyrdom. In light of our series, we're going to think about how his story was really about opportunities. Stephen was a deacon in the first century church, but Acts 6 and 8 says, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. In spite of the miracles, people argued with him, but verse 10 says, they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Acts 6 and 7 include Stephen's entire sermon, which is one of the few complete sermons by anyone that was recorded in the New Testament. He was giving people in Jerusalem an opportunity to hear the truth and embrace the message of salvation. Even the Jewish leaders were being given an opportunity to adjust their theology. But they weren't impressed because Stephen wasn't one of their scholars. However, because Stephen was anointed, they were convicted to the point that they gnashed on him with their teeth. The solution of those who opposed Stephen was no different than it has ever been with those who live by mere intellect or tradition instead of faith. They just wanted to shut him up. So they trumped up false charges and convinced a mob to begin stoning Stephen. This wasn't right or fair, but God didn't intervene to stop them. Stephen died. As he was dying, he saw a vision of Jesus in heaven and he described it to his killers. This too was an opportunity. So this story shows us that Stephen was given an opportunity to share the gospel and give his life. So the crowds and religious leaders could be exposed to the truth. And while at first glance it seemed like evil was overcoming good, the story also mentions that a man by the name of Saul was watching the coats of those who stoned Stephen. Saul would later become a Christian and turn into one of the greatest missionaries of all time. We call him Paul. In other words, Stephen's death was an opportunity for Paul to see a true Christian. And we have no guarantee of how people will respond to our acts of kindness and service. But we know that without an opportunity, they'll certainly be lost. So we serve and we let God take care of the rest of the story. Why don't we give this some thought and pray about what opportunities God may want to give others through our acts of service. God has always done his best work through people who served. Noah served by building the ark. Moses served by leading God's people. Daniel served by ministering to foreign kings. The prophets served by holding God's people accountable. And he's still calling on people to serve others on his behalf. To conclude our session, we'll put a face on our faith and take some time to share our own experiences as to how God has used us to serve others. But before we do that, let's consider another biblical hero that gave his whole life to service. If it weren't for him, God's people would have never made it into the promised land. His name was Joshua. When Joshua first appears in Scripture, he's just tagging along with Moses. He served like a personal assistant, fetching things, doing menial tasks. In short, while all his fellow teens were playing games and chasing their dreams, he took an opportunity to serve as pastor. 
As Moses' story is told, it becomes clear that everywhere Moses went, Joshua went. And because of Joshua's willingness to serve and his proximity to Moses, he experienced some amazing things. For example, he was evidently in the tent of the meeting when Moses had God's spirit come down. As he cared for his pastor, he picked up on Moses' spirit of ministry and his faith grew. When he was chosen to be one of the 12 spies to scout out Canaan, he came back excited, believing that God would deliver the giants and walled cities into Israel's hands. But only one other spy, Caleb, had that same kind of faith. Because so many of the spies were self-serving and did not have servants' hearts, they couldn't grab onto and cooperate with the greatest miracles that God wanted to do. You know the story. Because of the ten spies' unbelief, Israel had to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. But because of Joshua's faith and service, when it came time for Moses to die, God had him commissioned Joshua to take his place of leadership. How did Joshua get his big break? He served. Joshua moved from being a personal assistant to being the supreme leader. And it was Joshua who led the children of Israel over the Jordan to conquer the promised land. He did it not by pushing his way to the head of the pack, but he became a great leader by serving. What are some ways that you have been privileged to serve? 